and sisters. Uh, coming in, just tell you a little personal story. And the reason that I'm sharing from this space is because I know the value of sharing a past version of myself or a integrated expression of what I used to be and how uh, the shadow self can create separation and push away the very thing that we desire. There's been a few conversations that I've had in the last few days that have really highlighted this. Um, and so the story that I'm telling you is specifically around the initial repulsion that I had to the masculinity in my beloved and the extreme r resistance and pushing away to that frequency, to that uh, interpretation. And the reason it's come up is because I have seen and know many are also seeing through this lens. I have seen and know that many are moving through this personal lens themselves. And I have sisters that uh, get to know me personally, sisters that get to experience me as a mentor, as a individual human being, but then also as a guide and a wisdom keeper. And they're moving through this point of experiencing where they want a man to be like them. And they want a man to see them. They want a man to understand them. They want a man that effectively they feel will make, will connect with them in deep levels of intimacy, right? This is a part of the journey where a woman desires to be deeply in intimacy with men. And what they attract is a man that's very emasculated and in their feminine. And so the interesting thing around a woman that is attracting a feminine man is because she's desiring to see herself or to be seen through the eyes of another because she's yet to see her own divinity and her own beauty, right? So that's one and that's one way that this can play out in its unintegrated expression is that as a woman if you're attracting and you're wanting a man to really see and understand you and be you then you're really not um you're really not <laughs> as he jumps on live <laughs> if you're a woman that really wants a man to understand you and to see you then you're gonna keep attracting feminine men that is, and you're going to be a woman that's going to keep going into their masculinity because he won't be able to lead you. And that's because what you're desiring from him, you haven't yet cultivated within yourself. You are yet to see yourself. You're yet to like be with your own femininity. You are yet to surrender into your being. Now, if you're in that space, you're going to find that all of your shadow wounding is gonna come up in a strong masculine. Now, I have worked extremely hard within myself to surrender. <laughs> I've worked hard to surrender. And the journey of moving through being an extremely strong, wounded feminine and having a very dominant uh, expression and then surrendering through into the divine femininity has, um, taken time to cultivate and the understanding of when you attract a strong masculine it's going to bring up all of your insecurities it's going to bring up every part of yourself where you are yet to see where you have yet to heal your uh, your distortions around sexuality, your trauma around uh, physical abuse, your distortions around the patriarchy, all of those attributes within the self as a woman will come up. Now, what is really beautiful about the initial response that I had, and it was judgment, it was extreme judgment, and it's called spiritual ego, is that the way that I perceived my beloved from his social media 
not knowing him, not ever spoken to him, was that I was not in alignment or in it was not in integrity for me to be in that kind of connection with someone who, um, one of the, the men that listened to my story the other day, he was deeply humbled and realized that he had judged us the exact same way, that we were, we were not actually in integrity with wanting to be of service and that we just wanted to make money off people's vulnerability. And it wasn't until he heard my story and my truth around the situation that it was like, oh, I've actually judged these two human beings from my lens of what is spiritual. And that is what I did. I judged what is spiritual. I judged myself to be what is spiritual. I disconnected from all of the things that I loved in life. I was a fashion designer and a, a makeup artist, and I worked in um, bridal boutiques and the fashion industry, and I love material adornments and gifts and I love luxury. That is a part of my innate being that I enjoy and it's not from materialism but what I had to do for me was deconstruct and peel away the layers. Now the distortion is that we have to do that to be spiritual and it's not true. The distortion is that you just need to see where you have these attachments that you're filling voids. You can keep the money, you can keep the cars, you can keep the fancy um, attire, you can keep all of these things if you're looking at what's really sitting within your psyche and your thought forms and your uh, belief systems that are holding them in place as a false sense of security. And so my belief was that a man that is that attractive, that financially well off, and that is working in, a, in business that way would not be aligned with me consciously. I had already decided that no, that he, mm -mm, nope, couldn't possibly be uh, in a resonance for me. Yet Source brought us into resonance together and I was, I trust Source. And so because I trust Source, I was guided by Source and I let go of all the thought forms that I had and was open and willing to see what source was guiding. And this is where when we let go of our story of how we see someone, we actually get to see them. And we actually get to be ourselves at the same time. Because how you perceive me on my social media and how you may perceive uh, my partner on social media are very different to how we actually be and what we are. There is an awareness that when you are there to create something and when you are there to offer it and market something that for individuals that have worked with their own ego to such a degree, you understand the ego, right? So marketing is about talking to people's ego not to their soul. Marketing is about talking to the pain points of someone's human being and shifting that so that you can give them an opportunity into a deeper connection with what they truly desire. And most really, really, really high level business entrepreneurial experiential people that I am not yet <laughs> do this. They speak to what it is that you want from the ego lens to open that place because that's what drives you, getting out of pain. That's what drives most humans is to get out of pain. And so as we are looking at how can we judge someone on their business? How can we judge someone on how they look? How can we judge someone on who they're dating? How, how, how do we actually say that we are conscious spiritual beings if we are making these judgments and we're not having curiosity and, and self-reflecting? Why is this coming up in me? What is this actually about me? Am I uncomfortable with money? Do I feel I'm worthy to be in the goddess energy? Do I feel that I could be of more contribution if I made millions of dollars? How can I look at what I am 
in how I see the world. And that is what I feel is so beautiful about polarizing relationships. And then this is the main part of what I want to speak to is polarizing relationships is you have one very yin and one very yang individual, or you have a complete polarized expression of a masculine and feminine or a feminine and a feminine may, may be in that as well, or a masculine and a male and a male. Um, so it's not gender based, but energy. And when you are in those relationships, you are seeing from completely different lenses. And even in your unified source expression, you are still a limited being. So the way I see and be in the world in my expression is completely different, completely different to my beloveds. And before I had cultivated this point of unconditional love of seeing through God's eyes, this relationship, I couldn't, I couldn't be in this relationship because it would have activated me too much. It would have triggered me too much. I would have gotten too frustrated. I would have been too dominant of like controlling and covert in ways of like, why don't you see me? Why don't you understand my perspective? I would not have softened. I would have not yielded. I would not be holding at the times that was required. I would have pushed against. I would have wronged. I would have shamed because I was not able to be in a relationship with someone who held such strong masculinity because I was fucking terrified of it. Terrified of a strong masculine. Because that meant that I had to really yield and soften into the aspects of my true essence, which is the divine feminine. To trust in source and to also trust that the man that I'm with, regardless of who that is, that they're also led in themselves and able to lead and not control them and not influence them and know who I am and not self-abandon myself for them. And so our spiritual ego is a paradigm that you know, I've done the running bare feet in the forest. I've done the, I could live in a cardboard box. I've done the material possessions mean nothing to me and they still don't, but I like them. <laughs> I don't need them. And I have stripped myself raw and bare and met myself in the knowing of who I be. And so because I know myself, I'm able to be in a relationship where I can love someone unconditionally in who they are. That's relationship, that's union. It's not, I want you to see the world more like me and I want you to be more like me. This is the challenge with the masculine and the feminine is that the masculine doesn't understand the feminine and the feminine doesn't understand the masculine. And instead of trying to ask a question to become more aware and understanding of why they may be feeling, doing or experiencing the world in a very different way to you, we project, we judge, we blame, we point fingers, create wrongness, rather than accepting, allowing, opening, unifying? What if the beings that you have, if you're in a relationship now, or if you have been in a relationship, if you look at them now and you look at them without judgment, perfect, whole in who they are. What if you saw that they hold all of the things, literally all of the things, that you're not good at yet. That they hold the keys, the codes, the frequencies, the awareness. That they have mastered the opposite lens of what you be and that's why they're there. They're showing you the things that you're yet to cultivate within yourself. What if you actually saw them as that cosmic mirror? That they're offering you 
a deeper sense of self-connection through what they have mastered. The mastery is the polarity. No matter what consciousness level, if I look back at my marriage, I was in a very wounded state, but I was in a very polarizing relationship. And if I look back at my husband, he had the mastery of all the things that I was yet to even come close to and vice versa. But instead of saying and seeing, wow, you're amazing at this. I would love to learn from you or watch or understand or see what inspires you, what drives you. There becomes this, you're not like me. You make me uncomfortable because you bring up my insecurities, my wrongness, my shame, my unworthiness. And instead of me sitting in my own feelings around that, I'm going to push you away and make you wrong and create a narrative that you aren't right for me. And it's not that at all. It's an opportunity to keep leaning in to see ourselves and to understand our partner and our lover more. We are not meant to be like each other. I don't want to be with a woman. I don't want to be with a man that is feminine. And so because I know that is my truth, then whatever discomfort I have around the masculine is discomfort that I have within myself that's still sitting in the shadow consciousness of my being that I'm responsible for to see that aspect so that I can yield back into my feminine so that I can be soft, loving and let go of my own judgments. Yet the challenge is that the majority of humanity do not understand yin or yang energy. They do not understand the traditional feminine or the traditional masculine. And because of the amount of manipulation and distortion that's taken place between the masculine and feminine expressions of reality, and there is confusion with sexuality as well as gender now, there is so much fragmentation. We don't understand this. And so we journey, am I a lesbian? Am I bisexual? What is my sexual connotation? Do I need to have sex with a million people? Do I need to have sex with one? Am I monogamous? Am I polyamorous? Do I want to be in a committed relationship? Do I want to be sovereign and in my free will? Because all we're doing is journeying these poles, journeying them, going in each realm of what am I? Through the mirrors of our experience, we'll go and we'll dance in the feminine for a while and then we'll dance in the masculine and then we might dance in the dark feminine and then we might dance in the light feminine and then we'll come here and we'll come here until that bandwidth of separation becomes closer and closer and closer and you're like, oh, I'm in union with source, but I'm a woman. And as a woman, I am a female representation of union. And I desire to be with a male representation of union. But you cannot come to this point without looking at all of these aspects of your own belief systems, your own traumas, your own fragmentation. So you can truly choose to be with any individual being and if you didn't pull away, you could grow in to a sense of unification, regardless of who they are. Yet, at this point in our evolution, that's not what we're choosing. We have chosen people that will play roles to us to show us the mirrors of who we are. But that's what relationship is. It's an opportunity to cultivate yourself into more source connection, to more authenticity. And so, although there's uh, 
is not exactly the message that I had, but it's the perfect message for what is needing to be spoken. <laughs> mm. The next time that you feel judgment towards what is or isn't spiritual, what is or isn't in alignment, this is the, this is the one that makes me a little bit cringy, is because I've been it, I've done it, all of it. I've been the most cringy person possible. <laughs> been the most superior, spiritual, bypassy person that I know. I would love to see someone that has been worse than that than me. <laughs> see, that would feed my ego. <sighs> that what if everything is spiritual? <laughs> what if everything is source and even if you can't quite perceive that right now what if you did what if you started to see everything as God as spiritual and not that something's out of alignment what if you saw that it's perfect to creating alignment Every contrast, every judgment, every separation point, every repulsion, every part of you. If you let go of the story of separation and decided to see the story of alignment, what would come through that would be different? What would you allow your thoughts, feelings and behavior to be that would allow you to receive everything your heart actually truly desires because although that was my judgment around the masculinity and the strength and the traditional and it did bring up a sense of a story and narrative I didn't hold it I didn't attach it and I did not allow it to run me <laughs> I allowed source to open and what I got to receive and what I'm journeying in is everything my heart has ever desired. I am in the most beautiful, beautiful relationship that only Source <laughs> could have created. I love you. Have a beautiful, beautiful Monday.